Good morning, church. It's good to be with you here today. And today we are talking again about prayer, and this time fervent prayer. Acts 12, the church is still under harsh persecution, and uh, James, the brother of John, has been executed. Peter gets arrested over the festival of unleavened bread over Passover, uh, the time when they should be celebrating. They are instead uh, undergoing persecution. And this is what it says is the church's response. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was praying fervently to God for him. And the next section of Acts 12 is all about his miraculous rescue, how the angel has to come and uh, even strike Peter on the side to help uh, get him motivated to go. And then when Peter goes to marry the mother of John Mark's house, and Rhoda answers the door, and she just doesn't believe it. She thinks it's a ghost, and she goes in and uh, is, is trying to tell everybody. They're all so excited, but they think that it's just a vision or an apparition. Uh, so Peter has to just keep banging on the door until someone finally comes and opens it, and, and they celebrate together. It's a wonderful, and it's a miraculous thing. I think the two key words we want to um, focus on here is number one is fervent. Fervently, they were praying. And James echoes this. He says, the fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. You know, we don't get very far based on just our, our hopes. You know, you can tell someone, well, I hope you have a good day. It doesn't mean much. It's not uh, intercession. It, it's not a, a fervent prayer. You know, it's very common in our new agey culture. Someone saying, sending positive thoughts and energy your way. As if we could transfer some of our good energy on to somebody else. And, uh, of course, that doesn't accomplish very much what I, what I think or... The thoughts that I send your way aren't effective. They aren't for, well, they might be fervent, but they aren't effective. Um, the only thing that is effective is the fervent prayer of the righteous. And so fervent meaning that we are engaged in it constantly, regularly, consistently. Like that widow, we're going, uh, the, the widow going to the unjust judge, going regularly, constantly always asking, always seeking, always knocking. That's what those words mean when Jesus says, ask, seek, and knock. It's that continually keep doing it. Not that we need to badger God or he wants us to badger him, but there is some sense in that the fervency of what we do is an indication of how much we really desire it. What are the desires of your heart? that God would give you when you go to him fervently. And when we shift gears and we say, it's not my will that I want done, but God's will. And we're seeking that on earth as in heaven, as Jesus prayed. And we are fervently going after that with fasting and with prayer. God says that he will answer that. He will move towards us and empower us through his Holy Spirit to accomplish the task. I think the other word we want to focus on is, is surprise. They were surprised that God answered. I'm not going to chastise this church. Their fervent prayer must have been very legitimate, very fervent, because God worked an amazing miracle on their behalf to bring Peter out. But they were, in fact, surprised that God answered. And isn't it just like us, the things that we do, that when we do fervently pray and God answers in a way bigger than we could have ever expected, who could have thought? They were, they were probably praying for Peter to be strengthened and endured, that Herod might release him somehow, have a change of heart. Who could have imagined that an angel would come and lead a miraculous jailbreak? That was beyond anything they could have thought or imagined, just like Paul says. And so, you know, let's not get down on ourselves when God surprises us, but let's lift our thoughts a little higher. 
because our God can do more than we can ask or imagine. And when he does it, we can be delighted, we can be surprised, but let's expect him to do those amazing things in our life because he says that he would. So church, let's be a praying church. Let's be a fervent church, believing that God can do big things according to his will to advance his kingdom and for his glory. We'll talk to you soon again.